Okay. Um, from our previous lesson, na-introduce na sa atin ang amplitude modulation. And, ngayon, itutuli lang natin kung ano may yung na-discuss. But before that, we're going to review yung mga na-discuss na sa atin para marutin personalis sa puso at isip. Okay. Remember, nung na-discuss natin ang amplitude modulation, ang ibig sabihin ng amplitude modulation, okay, the very simplest um, way to understand is yung definition niya, which means that amplitude modulation, yung information signal, binabago niya or binavary niya yung amplitude ng carrier, which is usually a sine wave. Yun lang. Yun na amplitude modulation. And then, from there, na-discuss natin okay, kung ano ang magiging itsura ng isang AM signal or AM sine wave. Paano isinasakay yung information signal or yung tinatawag ding minsang modulating signal dun sa carrier signal. Okay. By the way, yung um, information signal or yung modulating signal, as you've seen here, is a sine wave and it is not always sine wave, no? Pwede rin yung um, square wave or pulse. But for analog, syempre, analog schemes or analog modulation techniques, analog yung modulating signal natin. So, meron tayong sine wave dito sa figure A, yung ating modulating signal or yung information signal. And then dito sa figure B is yung complete na na AM signal or tinatawag natin meron ng combination. Combination na ito ng information and carrier. And as you can see, kapag kinumbine nga natin yung dalawang signal, okay, through the process of modulation, ang nangyayari is nagkakaroon tayo ng complex signal in which kung trace mo yung ating um, meron tayong parang imaginary line dito sa taas tsaka sa baba na tinatawag nating envelope which resembles exactly or which resembles the information signal or yung modulating signal. So, kaya natural na isinasakay, kaya siya tinawag na carrier sine wave kasi natural na binubuhat niya or literal na binubuhat niya yung ating modulating signal. Okay, as you can see, nasa taas at ibaba niya. And, um, kailangan nating tandaan dito na um, mas mataas ang frequency, okay, higher ang frequency lagi ng carrier signal para mabuhat niya ito ng maayos. So, eto, yung nasa figure B, yan po yung ating AM wave or AM signal in the time domain, of course, okay, as a function of time. Okay, na-discuss din natin last time yung tinatawag natin Okay. Yung ating Sorry. Itong ating complex AM signal which is pinagsama nga no? from last time is dinerive din natin yung kanyang magiging um, equation kumbaga sa ating time domain at ito nga yung nangyayari. So, and as you can see, ang isang AM signal is, first part niya, nandoon pa rin yung carrier. And yung modulation process actually happens dito sa pangalawang term, in which kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong dalawang sine wave na pinagmumultiply. And that amplitude modulation actually is a product, no? kinukuha natin yung product nung modulating signal at saka nung carrier signal or carrier sine wave. And that is, para ma-achieve yun, para makuha yung product, kailangan natin ang tinatawag nating modulator circuit. So, yung modulator circuit, siya po ang kumukuha or nagpa-process para makuha natin yung product na output na gusto natin dito sa isang AM signal. Basically, 
kinukuha or minagmumultiply lang natin, kinukuha lang natin yung product ng information or modulating signal at saka rang carrier signal para makuha itong output na to. Na-discuss din natin last time yung tinatawag nating modulation index which is a measurement kung gaano na modulate nung modulating signal yung carrier signal. Okay, nasabi din natin last time that the modulating signal or the yes, the modulate the carrier signal should always be greater than yung peak ng carrier signal should always be greater than the um, peak ng modulating signal. Kasi kung hindi siya, kung mas mataas yung magiging um, peak voltage or maximum voltage ng modulating signal, magkakaroon ng tinatawag nating modulation. Dahil hindi nga pantay yung kanilang um, peak voltages or peak ng mga signal na yan, kailangan nating mag-create ng relasyon para to maintain na we are on track. Parang ma-measure lang natin na to assure that Vm is always less than Vc. At yun nga yung tinatawag nating modulation index. Ito yung relationship ng Vm all over Vc. Ano, uh, Vm ng and Vc, which is of course the ratio ng Vm and Vc. So, basically, modulation index equals Vm all over Vc. And because we always make sure that Vm is less than 1 or less than Vc as much as possible since we want that Vm is less than Vc to avoid distortion as much as possible okay, yung modulation index as uh, evident dito sa formula na to should also be less than 1 okay Pwede namang maging equal si Vm all over Vc and actually that is the ideal modulation index in which m equals 1 kasi pareha sila. Pero anything greater than 1, nagkakaroon na po tayo ng overmodulation and overmodulation creates distortion. Modulation index can also be expressed in terms of percentage. Ito yung tinatawag nating percentage or percent of modulation. And basically, ang formula, na, formula lang natin dyan is i-multiply natin by 100% yung ating makukuhang value ng modulation index. Recall also na ito nga, kapag nakuha natin yung modulation index is greater than 1, overmodulation happens. Ano bang nangyayari pag merong overmodulation? Nagkakaroon ng distortion. What do we mean by that? Sabihin, mayroon na tayong makiklip na part. And, di ba, sabi natin, sa amplitude modulation, isinasakay lang natin yung information or modulating signal dun sa carrier. So, yun yung nasa envelope. As you can see, kapag meron na tayong overmodulation, nawawala na po yung envelope. Okay, napuputol or merong parts yung envelope na nawawala or nakiklip. And because of that, eh, dito sa envelope na to, ito mismo, ito mismo yung information signal na kukunin ng detector or ng demodulator. Kung meron nang nawala dyan, imposible na at may, imposible nang makuha pa o ma-recover pa yung original na information signal dun sa demodulator kapag meron ng overmodulation. So, ganyan ang nangyayari sa overmodulation na nag ng distortion. By distortion, we mean merong clipping the information or the envelope is no longer the same as the shape of the original modulating signal. My parts na na clip. Uh, recall also that um, if we consider the complete AM signal, we can also express the modulation index in terms of its maximum and minimum value. Itong Vmax and Vmin na to, yung mga values dito, is kukunin natin dun mismo sa AM signal, okay? Yung um, formula natin kanina na M equals Vm all over Vc, si M, yun po yung peak ng modulating signal or maximum value ng modulating. Si Vc, yun yung peak naman ng carrier, okay? Magkahiwala yan. 
Okay? Pero pwede rin natin siyang uh, makuha gamit naman yung AM signal na, yung pinagsama na yung VM, or yung pinagsama na yung modulating signal and the carrier signal or carrier sine wave. Dito naman po ang formula natin. Vmax minus Vmin all over Vmax plus Vmin. And dinirive na rin natin yan last time. Ano pa yung mga napag-aralan na natin last time? Um, given yung ating AM signal no, na dinirive natin mula dun sa figure ng pagsakay ng modulating signal sa carrier, okay, um, by applying some trigonometric identities okay, and rearranging, makakapag-form tayo ng ganitong equation, which is, of course, parehas lang dun sa AM signal. Okay, um, nire-write lang natin siya in other ways. And mula dito, evident siya that Um, nagkaroon tayo ngayon ng dalawang um, sine or cosine functions na merong magkaibang frequency. At yung frequency nun is sum and difference nung carrier and modulating frequency as you can see dito. Okay. So, ang magiging itsura ng ating AM signal is actually combination siya ng tatlong sine and cosine signals para ma-create yung tinatawag nating envelope. Pero pag um, ito ay sa time domain, kapag plinat naman natin siya or green off natin siya sa frequency domain, maybe using the spectrum analyzer, ganito naman po yung mangyayari. And as you can see, bukod sa carrier carrier frequency, okay? Ano nangyari? Meron tayong dalawa pang signal, no? Or frequencies na tinatawag nating sidebands. Meron tayong lower sideband and meron tayong upper sideband. And, yung formula nun, yung distance ng lower sideband na frequency, if titignan po natin sa spectrum analyzer, yung distance ng um, lower sideband kay Um, carrier frequency is equal to the modulating frequency. And also, ganun din po yung distance from fre carrier frequency papunta kay upper side band, modulating frequency din yun. And that, kapag kinumpute natin yung total bandwidth from the lower side band to the upper side band, this is just equal to twice the modulating frequency. Yan yung bandwidth ng FM. Oh, sorry, AM. <laughs> Amplitude Modulation Signal. Ayan. And makukuha natin yung kanilang si upper sideband, frequency ng upper sideband is just the sum ng carrier and modulating frequency. Lower sideband is carrier minus modulating frequency. And yung bandwidth is upper minus lower. Pero, pag um, ginamit mo to, sinamsitute mo itong mga formula na nasa taas, makikita mo lang din that the bandwidth is just twice the modulating frequency. Na-discuss din natin last time yung tinatawag natin AM power. Okay. As you can see, or as we discussed last time, ang isang AM signal is meron talaga siyang carrier tapos meron siyang sidebands na tinatawag. Okay, kapag um, kapag ginamit natin itong um, scheme na to and then transmit natin siya over the channel. Ang tawag natin doon is double sideband full carrier system ang tawag doon kasi tinransmit mo yung upper and lower sideband Oh, so, LSB ito. Tapos, ito pa yung um, carrier. Ito yung carrier frequency, FC. Kapag transmit mo lahat yan, carrier and lower, tsaka upper sideband, ang tawag doon is double sideband, full carrier, or minsan tinatawag na rin siyang AM. Basta pag sinabi mong AM, Automatic, yun yung ibig sabihin ng yung mga ibang libro kasi, ang term nila is AM. And kapag sinabi nila ng AM, 
double side band full carrier. Ibig sabihin kumpleto niyang itrain and smith. Okay, yo. Doon sa channel, merong dalawang side band and merong dalawang carrier. Pero kagaya ng ang sabi ko, kung mapapansin natin dito sa formula natin ng total power, okay? Nakuha natin itong total power na to from, of course, zinerive natin. Pero pag hinati-hati mo yan, PC tapos PC times M squared over 4 tapos PC times M squared over 4 where, where PC is the carrier power and M is the modulation index. Mapapansin nyo na si PC ang pinakamataas. Okay? Sa sa isang AM signal or the double sideband full carrier na scheme or system, ang power ng system natin is pinakamalaki sa may carrier banda. Kapag nga ang modulation index natin is 1, 100% yan, mapapansin nyo na magiging PC plus 0.25 PC plus 0.25 PC ito. Okay? Mapapansin nyo that two-thirds ng carrier power kapag full ha, kapag double sideband full carrier ang carrier power two-thirds ng total power ay nasa carrier e eh, wala naman po doon yung ating information tama? ang ating information is nasa sidebands at saka yung dalawang sidebands sobra na yan kasi pwede na tayong kahit isa lang na sideband ang kunin ko kasi reflection lang naman yung isa. Yung lower sideband, it is just a reflection or a mirror ng upper sideband and vice versa for upper sideband at lower sideband. So, pwede isa na lang yung ating itatransmit. Mas makakatipid pa tayo sa power. So, usually, kung nagtitipid sila sa power, ang ginagamit natin is single sideband suppressed carrier. However, medyo mas mahirap yun. And to at, to achieve a um, single sideband, una, tatanggalin muna natin yung carrier. So, from double sideband full carrier, tatanggalin muna natin yung carrier. Ang ginagawa, sinasuppress. So, tinatanggal na si carrier. Ang nangyayari, dalawang sideband na lang siya. Ayan, dalawang sideband. Lower sideband, upper sideband. Kasi sabi nga, kasi nga two-thirds ng total power is nasa carrier. Eh wala namang information sa carrier. Eh di sobrang laking sayang nun. That is 66.67% ng total power mo ang nasa sayang. Kasi nga two-thirds. Okay? So kung tatanggalin mo yung carrier, malaking um, power saving na yun. So, ang ginagawa, pwedeng tanggalin na lang si carrier and then pwede mo naman nang i-transmit yung dalawa. No. Itong dalawa. Ang tawag natin sa skin naman noon is double sideband suppressed carrier or DSBSC. Double sideband suppressed carrier. Um, yung mga ibang book, kadalasan, uh, ang tawag na lang nila is DSB. Pag sinabi mong DSB or double sideband, automatic suppress na yung carrier doon. Okay. Pero kapag sasabihin mo na double sideband pero full carrier, kadalasan, AM ang, sa, ang tawag nila doon. Pag AM, kompleto. Okay. Pag DSB, wala lang carrier pero dalawa yung kanyang, dalawa yung kanyang sideband. Okay. Ito kasi yung first step. Kailangan, um, para ma-achieve natin yung single sideband sa press carrier, una tatanggalin muna natin yung carrier. And dahil nga natanggal na yung carrier dyan, di ba, um, yung formula natin kanina ng total power is PC plus M squared over 4 PC plus M squared all over 4 PC. Or PC, ito yung power sa carrier. Yung M squared over 4 PC, sila yung power sa upper and lower sideband. Dahil wala na yung power sa carrier, tinanggal mo na yan, ayan, burahin na natin. So, matitira na lang is yung dalawang powers or powers ng dalawang sidebands. Kaya, M squared PC over 4, M squared over 4 PC. Pag pinag-add mo yan, M squared all over 2 PC. So, sa isang double uh, sideband suppressed carrier or sa DSB, ang power na lang is M squared all over 2 PC. 
And then, kung gusto mo pang lalong mas mag magtipid, dahil nga, um, ang D, ito yung AM, or DSBCFC, ito yung DSBSC, double side band sa press carrier. Dahil mirror reflection lang naman tayo dito, itong dalawang side band, at isa lang naman talaga ang kailangan mo, okay? Minimum lang, kahit isa lang, okay, pwede na, kasi nandun na yung information, pwede ka nang mag-single sideband suppressed carrier na tinatawag or SSB-SC. Kadalasan, ang tawag na lang doon is SSB. Pag sinabi mong SSB, automatic um, suppressed carrier na yon. Sa SSB, mamimili ka lang kung upper sideband. So, pwedeng upper sideband lang yung transmit mo or pwedeng lower sideband lang. Sobrang laki ng tipid nito Okay, wala na yung carrier power. So, nakatipid, nakatipid ka na kaagad ng 67%. Tapos, kalahati pa ulit ng one-third. So, that is one all over six. No? Malaking malaki yung matitipid kapag single sideband sa plus carrier. However, of course, it comes with a price. No? Wala na. Ang mga suppressed carrier or ang mga single side, itong single sideband ang magiging problema lang nito or disadvantage is dun sa may bandang receiver na, okay, sa demodulator circuit, kapag ma-recover, i-recover na siya, medyo mas mahirap siya, okay, kasi kailangan, dahil iisa lang, parang kumbaga, dahil iisa lang, wala siyang reserva. Kung nasira ito, or nagkaroon ng distortion, nung, uh, nung sinend yung upper sideband, yung nag-iisang sideband na yun, kapag sinend yun, at nagkaroon ng distortion, wala na siyang, um, wala na siyang paraan, wala na siyang pagkukumparahan kung, ano, kung, kung tama pa ba yung information na nakukuha ko. Dahil mataas ang risk, di ba ang noise, lagi namang nandyan yan sa communications channel. So, ang gagawin mo, ang disadvantage nito is that kailangan in sync. Okay? Kailangan sabay na sabay simultaneous yung um, modulator and demodulator mo. Dapat balance siya para perfect yung pagkakareceive. Kasi kapag hindi na perfect, kay wala siyang reserva. Unlike dito sa DSBC, okay? Kung dalawa yung sideband na transmit mo, and then, kunwari, yung upper sideband ay eh, nagkaroon ng distortion, pwede mo siyang ikumpara dun sa kabilang sideband or dun mo kunin yung na-distort na part. And, ganun din yung kapag na-distort naman yung LSB, yung lower sideband naman, ikukumpare mo din naman siya sa upper sideband para makita mo kung saan naman yung part na na-distort and marirecover mo pa rin siya. Parang kumbaga, kapag dalawang sideband yung um, tinanismit mo, Meron kang reserva kasi parehas na parehas na replica yan, di ba? Magkamukhang magkamukha yan. So, pwede mong i-compare. Unlike kapag single sideband, suppressed carrier, wala ka nang mag, uh, pagkukumparahan. So, dapat in sync yan. Synchronous talaga dapat yung modulator and demodulator. And then, kailangan mo i-consider yung mga noise, ganyan, ganyan. Pero, yung mga circuits nun, i-discuss pa lang natin sa next uh, meeting or next chapter. Okay. Iyan yung concept po ng sa AM power. Okay, medyo ano kasi talaga medyo critical ang uh, pagko-compute ng power sa AM because yun nga halos lahat ng power kapag sinend mo siya lahat or transmit mo gamit ang DSB FC or full carrier, lahat na sa carrier power. So medyo magastos yun kapag sa power kapag gano'n ang gagamitin natin. Ngayon, um, dun sa, panda, idadagdag ko lang ito, no, dun sa modulation index, hindi laging isang signal lang yung nagmamodulate sa carrier. Minsan, maraming signals or maraming modulating frequency, maraming information signal na minomodulate ang isang single carrier. For example, pag voice, yung tinanasmit natin, Okay, yung voice, maraming frequency yan, hindi lang naman siya uh, isa lang. So, kapag multiple na yung nagmamodulate, ang total modulation index ay makukompute natin gamit ito. So, para siyang resultant lang, 
ang multiple um, ang modulation index ng multiple modulating frequencies is just the resultant ng individual modulating uh, modulation index which is ang um, total is equal to the square root ng m1 squared plus m2 squared plus m3 squared depende kung ilan yang um, modulation frequency or modulating frequencies So, continue our discussion, ang mangyayari lang ngayon is we are going to solve sample problems, some problems, um, problem solving or word problems na kailangan ng mathematical solution dito sa amplitude modulation. Sample number one, find the modulation index if a 10 volt carrier is amplitude modulated by three different frequencies with amplitudes of 1, 2, and 3 volts respectively. So this is a, um, a single carrier modulated by multiple or modulating frequencies. So ang gagawin natin, kukunin natin yung total modulation index. Ang una natin gagawin is, kukunin muna natin yung modulation index kapag minomodulate sila ng um, isa-isa. So for example, or M1 para sa unang signal which is ang yung mga signal natin ang amplitude nila 1, 2, and 3 volts diba ang ating formula natin ng modulation index is Vm all over Vc or maximum voltage ng modulating signal divided by maximum voltage ng carrier signal so, gagawin natin yan isa-isa dun sa tatlong modulating frequencies na yan or modulating signal. So, for M1, ang kanyang amplitude is 1 divided by amplitude naman ng carrier is 10. Therefore, ang modulation index for M1 is 0 0.1. Gagawin din natin sa M2, so that is 2 all over 10. And then, same is true for M3. That is 3 all over 10 or 0 0.3. And then we compute the total modulation index which is equal to M1 squared plus M2 squared plus M3 squared. Then take the square root. And that is equal to the square root of 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.3 at ilan po yan? So, medyo may na po yata yun. That is 37. Okay, for example, number 2. A 400 watt carrier is modulated to a depth of 75%. Calculate the total power in the modulated wave. Okay. Hindi niya sinabi kung anong scheme yan, di ba? Um, kung DSB, double sideband full carrier, double sideband suppressed carrier, or single sideband suppressed carrier. So, we assume natin that is AM or DSB. FC siya. Full carrier. So, ang total power for DSBC, DSBFC is equal to the carrier power times 1 plus M squared all over 2. Given naman po ang ating carrier power, which is 400 watt, and then, ang kanyang modulation index ay 75%, or that is equal to 0 0.75 okay. Therefore, ang ating total power is equal to 400 times 1 plus 0 0.75 squared divided by 2 That is
512.5 watts. So, yung bio na kuha nyo, saan na kuha ko? Basic lang, direct substitution. Okay, basic lang. So, next example tayo. A broadcast radio transmitter radiates 10 kilowatts when the modulation percentage is 60. How much of this is the carrier power? So, pinapahanap dito yung carrier power. So, ibig sabihin, yung 10 kilowatts na yun, dahil yun yung niradiate na sa transmitter, yun na mismo yung total power ng AM or ng broadcast radio transmitter. So, ibig sabihin, ang, kinaka ang this time, makahanapin natin is yung TC. From our formula let na TC or total power equals TC times 1 plus M squared divided by 2. Makukuha natin yung um, expression para mahanap si TC. It is equal to the total power divided by 1 plus M squared all over 2. Total power natin is 10 kilowatts, that is 10,000, divided by 1 plus modulation index is 0 0.60. Okay? Okay, malilito kasi ang given dyan is percentage. So, dito sa formula natin, dapat naka um, modulation index siya decimal. So, convert nyo lang naman, divided by 2. And squared dapat yun. So, that will give us a carrier power of? Eight thousand four hundred seventy-four point fifty-eight, or that is eight point forty-seven kilowatts. Diba? Tignan nyo yan. Yung transmit ng AM is ten kilowatts, tapos eight point forty-seven nun yung naroon nandun yung sa carrier power. Sobrang laki na nasa sayang na power kasi wala naman sa kanya yung information example number 4 example number 4 an antenna current of an AM transmitter is 8 amperes when only the carrier is sent but it increases to 8.93 amperes when the carrier is modulated by a single sine wave. Find the percentage modulation and determine the antenna current when the percent of modulation changes to 0.8. Okay, paano natin kukunin yun? So, meron tayong given na antenna current, 8 amperes when the carrier is sent. So, uh, yun yung... current lang nung carrier and then ang sabi dito, nag increase siya ng 8.93 when the carrier is modulated by a single sine wave so yun na yung total na total current niya kasama na yung mga, uh, nung na modulate na siya, 8.93 amperes na ano na ngayon yung percentage ng modulation what is M ok, wala pa tayong formula para sa current, di ba? Kasi ang, ang formula lang natin is yung power. Pero minsan, kailangan nating um, may mga uh, systems na kailangan nating alamin yung current dun sa antena. Lalo na kapag metered siya. So, kunin natin yun dito sa ating equation ng total power, which is equal to Tc plus, ah, uh, sorry, times 1 plus m squared all over 2. Diba ang um, equation ng power is equal lang yan sa i squared r, tama, i t squared, tapos, yung resistance ng antenna. And of course, pag divide ko yan ng, ganun din yung PC. 
or yung carrier power. Carrier current squared times R. So, i-divide natin sila parehas. That is IP squared all over R divided by IC squared all over R. Maka-cancel yan. Parehas lang naman yung resistance ng antenna. And therefore, we have IP squared all over IC squared. But this is equal, di ba? Yung power na to equal yan sa PC times 1 plus MC squared para sa total power. And then yung para sa carrier, PC lang. Para maka-cancel naman this time yung PC. And therefore, we have yung ratio ng IT all over IC squared. Okay, nire-write ko lang yung IT squared all over IC squared. I equal lang sa 1 plus M all over 2 squared. Kapag kinuha natin yung square root nyan, makukuha natin that IP all over IC is equal to, syempre, square root mo rin yung kabilang side. Sabi ko nabang side. Kaya square root ng 1 plus M squared all over 2. And therefore, yung total current is equal to IC times the square root ng 1 plus M squared all over 2. Ito na yung formula natin. For, for the total current, ng AM okay, current sa antenna Yan, gin, uh, kinuha lang natin sa definition ng power and yung formula natin ng power using the modulating modulation index so, pwede na tayong mag substitute dyan, meron naman tayong IC and IP ang hinahanap sa atin is yung modulation index therefore 8 Point ninety three is equal to 8 times the square root of 1 plus m squared all over 2. Or 8.93 all over 8 equals the square root of 1 plus m squared all over 2. Square both sides. So 8.93 all over 8 squared equals 1 plus m squared all over 2. Okay, rearrange lang natin yan using simple algebra. 8.93 all over 8 squared minus 1 divided by or times 2. Tapos, kukunin mo yung square root. Or, syempre, Kapag gamit mo yung calculator, isi-shift solve mo lang din naman yan. So, let me know kung tama yung ating nakuha. 8.93 divided by 8 equals... So, 0.7p. Ang modulation index na hinahanap natin is 0.7p or... 70%. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Example number 5. A certain transmitter radiates 9 kilowatts with the carrier unmodulated. So that is the carrier power. And 10.125 10 kilowatts when the carrier is sinusoidally modulated. Total power na yun. Calculate the modulation index. Tapos, kapag yung sine wave daw ay sina simultaneously transmitted with modulated in modulation index of 0 0.4, determine the total radiated power. Okay? Tandaanin natin. Ang um, transmitter, merong carrier power na 9 kilowatts. Yun yung ibig sabihin niya dun sa radiates 9 kilowatts with the carrier unmodulated. Ibig sabihin, carrier lang. Wala yung modulating signal. So, that is the carrier power. Next, nung minodulate na, naging 10.125 kilowatts na. So, yun na ngayon yung total power. Ang unang pinapahanap sa atin is ano yung modulation index 
uh, nitong um, letter A, yung unang pinapahanap is calculate the modulation index. From our formula, Pt equals total power equals the carrier power times 1 plus modulation index squared divided by 2. Hindi nga naman kasi sinabi na kung anong scheme siya, pero assume na yun agad na double side band full carrier. So, again, that is 10.125 kilowatts. Parehas namang nakakilowatts itong um, 10.125 tsaka PC kahit hindi mo na siya uh, ilagay, hindi mo na ilagay yung 9 kilowatts. Magka-cancel lang din naman yung symbols nila. Kasi ang modulation index, diba, walang wala yung tawag dito um, units. So, from there, calculate natin ang makukuha nating modulation index ay dun sa unang is 0 0.5 Tama po ba yung nakuha natin? Ngayon yung pangalawang tanong is ang sabi dito Kapag minodulate naman this time, okay, merong sumabay pa na isang sine wave, okay, na ang modulation index naman is 0.4, ano naman na ngayon yung magiging total radiated power? So, this time, oh, multiple frequencies na yung nagmamodulate. So, since nakuha na natin yung modulation index ng una, bago pa sumabay yung 0.4, or yung uh, frequency na merong 0.4 na modulation index, kunin na muna natin yung total muna na modulation index na kasama na yung 0.4 and yung formula natin is 0.5 squared plus yung isa na 0.4 squared and then ang total modulation index natin ay 0.64 ito na ngayon yung gagamitin natin modulation index para i-compute na yung total power na this time kasama naman na yung 0.4 so balik ulit tayo dun sa total power na formula which is PC times 1 plus M squared all over 2 then computing for the total power yung 9 kilowatts na carrier power hindi yung nagbago so 9 kilowatts pa rin times 1 plus 0.64 na this time yung ating modulation index kasi nga dumagdag na or sumabay na yung 0.4 divided by 2 and that is equal to 2 total power is 10.8432 kilowatts or 10.84 kilowatts okay next example example number 6 the antenna current of an AN transmitter modulated to a depth of 40% by audio sine wave is 11 amperes it increases to 12 amperes as a result of simultaneous modulation. By another sine wave, what is the modulation index due to this second sine wave? 40% kapag mag-isa pa lang nung nagmamodulate na sine wave, isang sine wave pa lang, at ang total power niya is 11 amperes. Then, nag-increase siya ng 12 amperes nung dinagdag na ngayon yung kabilang o yung isa pang sine wave. Ano yung modulation index ng isa? So, ang working formula natin is yung kanina. Total antenna current is equal to current do sa carrier times the square root of 1 plus m squared all over 2. For the first condition, nung una pa lang, 
uh, only one modulating first condition ang total current is 11 and then ang uh, modulation index 0 0.4 so dito ang una natin kukunin for the first condition is kung ano yung carrier power kasi yun yung hindi nagbabago magbago man o dumami man yung mga nagmomodulate yung carrier current sorry is hindi nagbabago so yun muna yung ating kukunin so we get 11 amperes equals IC times the square root of 1 plus 0 0.4 squared divided by 2 from there makukuha natin na yung current yung sa carrier is 11 divided by square root of 1 plus 0.4 squared divided by 2 which is equal to 10.58 amperes Okay, nung pangalawang condition na, nung meron ang sumabay, nagbago na yung um, total current, naging 12 amperes na. So, for the second condition, or second scenario, the total current becomes 12 amperes. So, still, kukunin natin naman this time yung modulation index naman. So, yung total current na yan, 12 amperes, i-equate natin sa IC which is 10.58 still using this formula IT equals IC square root ng 1 plus m squared the square root of 1 plus yung modulation index dito yun yung total nung pinagsama na divided by 2 so kukunin natin yung modulating modulation index na total or total modulation index we get Seventy five point sixty eight or zero point seventy six sabi na natin. Okay. Ito modulation index na to total yan. So alam natin na zero from the first condition zero point four yung nauna. At alam natin na yung for multiple frequencies ang formula natin is m one squared plus m two squared plus kung ilan man yon. So since dalawa lang dito m one sa ka m two lang. Therefore, we get 0 0.76 squared, uh, sorry, hindi yun squared, equals the square root ng, yung M1, yun yung sa first condition natin, 0 0.4 squared, plus yung M2, yun yung hinahanap natin ngayon, yung pangalawang sine wave. And from there, makukompute nyo, compute natin, na yung modulation index nung pangalawa is 0 0.65. Yan na yung final answer. Any questions? Okay, number 7. A 400 watt carrier is amplitude modulated to a depth of 100%. So, modulation index na is 1. Calculate the total power in case of DSVSC techniques. And then, ano naman yung power saving niya? And then, kapag pinanita natin yung modulation index, ang dami-dami. So, okay, unahin natin yung letter A. Kung mapapansin nyo, sinold na natin to kanina, 400 watts to a depth of 100%, I think. Example number, awala ah, pala. 75% pala yung example number 2. Okay. Four hundred watts yung carrier. So PC equals four hundred watts. Modulation index is one hundred percent percent yun. So kapag index one lang. 
Ang hinahanap for letter A is the total power in case of AM or that is double sideband full carrier and then in case of double sideband suppressed carrier. So for letter A, for AM or double sideband full carrier, ang total power natin is equal to PC times 1 plus M squared all over 2. That is equal to PC natin, 400 watts, times 1 plus 1 squared all over 2. Total power natin for AM is equal to Six hundred. For DSP or double sideband suppressed carrier naman, anong mangyayari dun sa ating total power? Matatanggalan siya lang PC. So, PC M squared all over 2 PC na lang siya. That is equal to 1 squared all over 2 times 400 or that is kalahati na lang ng 400 so ang ating PT na DSB ay 200 watts sorry, hindi natin nilagyan ng watts yan po yung power for AM and power for double sideband suppressed carrier Sabi dito, letter B, how much power saving is achieved for DSBSC? So, pag sinabi natin power saving, imamainos uh, lang natin siya dun sa laging ang basihan natin is kapag double sideband full carrier. So, power saving is equal to yung power, total power kay AM or double sideband full carrier minus total power kay DSB or double sideband suppressed carrier and that is equal to 600 minus 200 watts and that is equal to 400 watts actually dito pa lang merong trick na dyan di ba 600 watts ngayon na compute mong total power sa AM e di ba ang DSBC natanggalan lang naman ng carrier power e alam mo naman na yung carrier power is 400 Therefore, ima-minus mo na lang 600 minus 400. Dapat makuha mo 200. Pero okay lang din naman na gamitin itong formula na to. Kasi mag-iiba lang ito naman kapag ay hindi pala siya mag-iiba kahit ibahin natin yung modulation index. So, therefore, kapag tinatanong yung power saving between double sideband suppressed carrier and yung double sideband full carrier, dapat ang magiging difference lang nila o yung power saving is yung power dun sa carrier. Kasi yun lang naman yung natanggal. No? Logical naman, common sense. Ganun naman talaga dapat. Kasi tinanggal mo lang yung carrier power. O di dapat ang makukuha mo or makikita mong natipid mo is yung buong carrier power which is 400 watts. Minsan, um, ang pinapakompute dito is percent power saving. Hindi niya naman sinabi na percent. So, how much power saving lang naman yung hinahanap? Kapag kukunin natin yung power um, saving, i-divide mo lang itong difference nila dun sa um, double sideband full carrier. So, para siyang ganito. Pag percent siya, power sa AM minus power sa kung ano mga scheme yan divided by power sa AM para maging percent. So, for this example, kung 400 yung natipid mo, divide natin sa 600 watts. In percentage, nakatipid ka ng 2 thirds or that is 67 or 66.67%. Which is of course, like what I've said, yung power sa carrier. ba Kapag full carrier, 2 thirds ng power is nasa carrier. Okay, for letter C, 
if the depth of modulation is changed to 75%, then how much power is required for transmitting the DSVSC wave? DSVC na lang tayo. So, ang total power natin is m squared all over 2 dc. The modulation index this time is changed to 0 0.75 squared divided by 2 times the carrier power which is 400 watts. The total power is equal to 112.5 What happened? Ano ang um, kung titignan nyo yung ating modulation di ba? ay compare natin yung power sa DSBC na ang modulation ay 0 0.75 tapos yung modulation na 100 na 100% or 1 as you can see mag medyo may matitipid din tayong power din mas mababa yung 0 0.75 kasi dito sa ating formula okay yung total power is proportional dun sa square ng modulation index. However, of course, bababaan mo naman yung modulation index. May trade-off yun kasi modulation index is a measure of how well gaano na mamodulate ng modulating signal yung carrier power. So, ang ideal natin is 1. And uh, kapag 1, ang power natin is 200 watts. Pero pag binabaan natin, makakatipid tayo ng power. Pero, bumaba naman yung modulation index. So, nasa sa'yo na yan. Kung magde-design ka, kung sino ang ating i-compromise. Okay, any question? Okay, we proceed with the next example. Example number 8. Double side band suppressed carrier transmitter radiates 1 kilowatts. 1 kilowatt when the modulation percentage is 60%. How much of carrier power is required if you want to transmit the same message by an AM transmitter. Uh -huh. DSBC, yung unang condition, and ang total power sa DSBC ay M squared all over 2 PC. Given yung radiates 1 kilowatt, watt, 1 kilowatt, that is the total power, the modulation percentage is 60%. We can compute for PC, which is equal to the total power divided by M squared all over 2, or that is equal to 2 PT all over M squared, or 2 times 1 kilowatt, divided by 0 0.6 squared and that is equal to 5.55 yung carrier power oh. Yan lang yung hinahanap. How much of the carrier power is required? 5.55 kilowatts. Okay. Yan na kakailanganin mo para matransmit mo na siya kapag DSBC full carrier na. 
Question. Ay, sorry. Sample number 9, the 400 watt carrier is something with modulated to a depth of 100%. Calculate the total power in case of SSB technique. How much power saving is achieved compared to AM than BSBC? If the depth modulation is changed to 75%, then how much power? Okay, this is the same example, pero dun sa number 7, pero this time, SSB technique ang gagamitin natin. Still, the carrier power is 400 watt. Modulation index is 1. For letter A, using SSB, ano naman ang magiging total power? Okay. Pag SSB, di ba, single side band na lang siya. So, M squared all over 4, kasi isang side band na lang, PC. And that is equal to 1 fourth na lang nung PC. 1 squared all over 4 times 400, or that is equal to 100 watts na lang ang itatransmit mo. Or ang kailangan mo for single side band. Ang tinatanong pa for letter B, ilan yung power saving niya in terms of compared to AM and compared to PTSBC. Yung nasolve natin kanina na power for AM ay 600 watts. I think, balikan natin. Yes, ang PTAM natin or power kapag double sideband full carrier ay 600 watts. Pag single side, uh, double sideband suppressed carrier 200 watts. Yan. So, pag power naman ng double sideband suppressed carrier 200 watts. Okay. Ilan ang per power saving natin? Um, kapag uh, compared kay AM, of course, compared kay AM, SSB to SSB. 600 minus 100. Okay, napakalaking power saving ng 500 watts. And compared naman kay double sideband, power saving compared to double sideband suppressed carrier is PT the DSB minus PT SSB and that is 200 watts minus 100 watts. 100 watts. And again, kung gusto nyo ng percent as a percentage siya, i-divide nyo siya sa, kung compared sa PTAM, kung i-divide mo sa power ng AM, kung compared sa DSB, i-divide mo sa total power ng DSB. So, in percentage, this is 0.83 or 83.33%. Diba? Napakalaking power saving yan. Kapag compared naman sa DSB. <laughs> what? 100 divided by 250%. Okay. Letter C. Palitan ulit natin yung modulation index ng 75%. Ilan naman yung total transmitted power sa ESSB? SSB. Still, ang formula natin, M squared all over 4 PC. Change the modulation index to 75% or 0.75 squared over 4 times 400 watts. SSB is equal to 56.25 watts. Again, syempre, mas mababa kasi naka um, directly proportional ang power, total power sa SSB as you can see dun sa square ng modulation index. Okay, last example. 
uh, an SSB transmitter radiates 0.5 kilowatts when the modulation percentage is 50%. How much of carrier power is required? Ah, okay. Total power equals sa SSB M squared all over 4 PC. Solving for the carrier power Divide lang natin ng m squared all over 4, or that is equal to 4 pt all over m squared. Substitute natin yung given. Given carrier power is 0 0.5 kilowatts. Divided by 60% naman this time. 0 0.6 modulation index. And that is equal to Five point fifty five kilowatts pare na carrier power. Ah, meron pa pala akong <laughs> okay, itong eleven ito na ang magiging assignment nyo. Calculate the percentage power saving. When the carrier and one of the sidebands are suppressed in an AM wave and modulated to a depth of 100% and 50%. Okay, any questions? So for yung next topic natin, ang gagawin na natin is um, we will look into the circuits. Okay. Paano tayo nakakapag-create ba? Kasi so far, mga theories pa lang ang concept. Okay. Paano, natin, paano tayo nakakapag-create ng AM signal? Um, Doon naman tayo sa bandang circuits na part.